Hey everyone, welcome back to the penultimate episode of C Sharp and .NET development and VS Code in uh, for beginners. <laughs> and also the second to last time where I have to remember that really long title that I gave for some reason. So in the last episode, we talked all about debugging and all of the new debugging improvements that exist when you install C Sharp Dev Kit with VS Code. And yeah, ultimately just how much easier it is to debug using those new updates. And this time around, we're going to do the same thing, but for testing. So I've still got my Codal project here. If you want to follow along, you can check out the repo. Go ahead and clone it if you want, and swap over to the testing branch so that you can see the same thing that I'm doing if you want to walk alongside me. And this time around, you might notice that there is a new project that I went ahead and added behind the scenes in the solution, and that is Codal Test. This is my test project that contains a bunch of different random tests that I decided to do for a couple scenarios. Specifically, we're going to hone in on play codal test. Uh, but as a quick aside, one thing I want to highlight and another bonus about the Solution Explorer is that Solution Explorer makes it very easy to see your dependencies that, um, that each project has. So in addition to the project references that we've got, in this case, the test needs to reference um, codal and codal logic. You can also see your analyzers that you're using, any frameworks that you're using. I'm using .NET Core, for instance. Any packages that you've got. Uh, specifically, the one that's relevant to this uh, example is BUnit. BUnit being a uh, unit test framework that I can use to test Blazor components in my code because I'm using a Blazor application. So yeah, definitely take advantage of the dependencies window. It can be really useful, whether you're debugging, whether you just want to understand what all is being supported inside your project. And yep, it's a great view. So it's one you can't get if you're outside the Solution Explorer. So definitely use the Solution Explorer for that. And I'm going to specifically hone in on play codal test here. And this is MS test based with BUnit being used alongside of it. But what's great about testing with C Sharp Dev Kit is that it is compatible with all kinds of basic unit tests, such as MS test, N unit, X unit, uh, Playwright. Playwright um, is a new one that is compatible. So you have a lot of different options. So there's really no excuse why you shouldn't be adding tests when you're <laughs> developing your C Sharp code. Now, I've got a couple scenarios, so let me walk you through them. I've got attempt start at 1, which is just checking that attempts start at 1 when a new game happens. Submitting the wrong guess, so making sure the correct actions happen when a wrong guess is submitted, such as the attempts going up by 1. Submitting a correct guess, so same thing, but making sure that, for instance, the pop-up that says you won is appearing. And finally, what, seeing what happens when a guess is not equal to five letters. So making sure that we get that red input text below the input box that says that our guess has to be five letters long. Now, the window of today's episode that we're going to be honing, on and honing in on <laughs> is the testing pane here. So as you can see, there's not much exciting going on here. This is a window that exists in VS Code by default, but it doesn't honestly do much unless you have C Sharp Dev Kit installed when you're writing C Sharp related tests. So in order to see the magic happen here, we actually need to go ahead and build this project first. So let's do that so we can see this get populated. So I'm going to go build this project via my Solution Explorer by right-clicking it, and select Build. Let's go into testing and see what happens. All right, so check this out. You can see that VS Code was able to identify all of my different test me methods across all of my different projects and my different files. So this is really nice because of that automatic detec detection. Believe it or not, Automatic detection did not exist prior to C Sharp Dev Kit's existence. So <laughs> if you want to have that feature so that you're not manually trying to uh, get VS Code to pay attention to certain methods, definitely do so, because that is a nice time saver. But from here, we don't have any test results yet, and that's because we haven't run anything. But we also have plenty of options to choose from there. So we can choose to run tests individually, or we can choose to run all of our tests from here. And in addition to the Enhanced Test Explorer capabilities with C Sharp Dev Kit, you also get some new command palette 
actions as well. So if you do shift control P, the only keyboard shortcut you'll ever need, you can go look for test. And you can see all these different related options. So you can run all of your tests. You can debug all your tests. You can debug just the failed test. You can rerun the failed test. So you have a lot of different options, a lot of filtering options at your disposal, too. It's very helpful. So whether you're more of a keyboard shortcut person or a command palette person and you want to do all of your test work from here, or if you want to do it directly from this window, or if you want to do it directly in line with the editor, you have plenty of options. So with the editor, it's really nice, too, because you can directly run a test right from the editor without having to have any specific window or command palette open. So lots of cool options depending on your preference. I'm going to take the easy route and run all of the tests and see what happens. So from there, you get a little status icon. In this case, all of them are currently running. So we won't know just yet what the status is. My fingers are crossed, hoping all of them succeed. And here we go. Cool. So we have gotten six out of eight successful tests run. Uh, the ones that did run successfully, most of them came from the project template portion of the project that I've got here. But some of these, not so much. So one of them includes the guess is not five letters, thrown exception. It'll let us kind of know what's going on here. Specified argument was out of the range of valid values. Not quite sure what that means, so maybe we might want to take the debugging route on this one to see what's up. As for submitting correct guess, I'm sure there's a similar issue going on here too, but let's hone in on guess is not five letters for now. So to do that, uh, the file's gone, but good news, I can always just click on go to test or hit alt enter when I select a test in the test explorer. And that will take me to that location, which is pretty nice. And I'm going to set a breakpoint. Shout out to the debugging episode prior, if you haven't watched that one yet. It works basically the exact same way <laughs> as you would um, debugging anything else. I'm going to set a breakpoint here at the button that the user clicks when they submit a guess. So let's go ahead and debug this one, and only this one. All right, so we've hit our breakpoint. Welcome back to the run and debug panel. As I mentioned before, you've got your variables, your watch, your breakpoints. Uh, some of these watch variables I don't need anymore, though. And this test is all well and good, but I think there's something really going, behind, uh, going on behind the scenes in the play codal file itself. So let's go ahead and step into this. All right, so I'm taken to my submit guess method. And the first thing that we have to check is making sure that the guess that's being submitted is equal to five letters. If it's not five letters, then we're going to display a guess size message. And for this particular test, because ideally we want to make it so that the, uh, the, the guess itself is not going to be five letters, so the example we're using here is worlds, then we want this if to return true and then result in the display guess size message displaying. So from there, we'll step on over. And that's a good sign. So the if statement is entering correctly. But upon further inspection, it's looking like display guess size <laughs> message is being set to, fa to false. Again, you can put whatever variables you want in the watch window to see the value there as well. So yeah, that's not great. I think that's what's causing the issue. So somewhere down the line here, we made it so that display guess size message got set to false and not to true. So if we fix that, then we should have a working test. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Let's go back to our test. And now I'm going to run that test and see what happens. All right. So motion passes. <laughs> the test was successful. And all is right with the world, at least for now until later behind the scenes when I have to go figure out what's going on with the submitting correct guess test. But uh, with that, you're able to see how easy it is to be able to manage all of your tests, how easy it is to 
run tests either individually or as a whole, and how easy it is to debug test if you need to as well. And as I stated earlier, this is compatible with all kinds of different testing uh, frameworks such as B unit, M N unit, MS test, X unit, you name it, it is probably compatible. And yeah, so now it is easier, easier than ever to be productive while testing your C-sharp applications in VS Code. So definitely check that out. And yeah, that concludes the bulk of all the cool stuff anyway that I'm going to show you regarding C-sharp dev kit extension uh, and VS Code. So tune in in the next episode where we close out this series. I'm so sad. But also uh, leave you with some resources and tips and tricks on how you can go learn even more about C-sharp dev kit and VS Code and get started with actually contributing to the wider community. So you don't want to miss it. So happy coding. See you next episode.